friends, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, back with another video, and today I'm super excited to be setting up my reading journal for the new year. I've loved having a reading journal over the last couple years, and I have so much fun when it's the start of the year and I can set up my brand new notebook. I love to use square notebooks from Archer and Olive. I'll have the specific one I'm using linked in the description box, and I'll also link my reading journal playlist down there if you want to see past year's setups, some flip throughs of of completed reading journals and some other types of spreads. But in this video, it's all about getting set up for 2024. I'm sticking with my sort of vintage scrapbooky theme for my reading journal. I really like doing something different in my reading journal than I do in my bullet journal. Going with more of a scrapbooky feel with lots of different textures and sort of vintage elements and tea stained paper gives me a very cozy academia sort of feel, which is perfect for a reading journal in my opinion. I do have a video tutorial explaining how I make tea stained paper, so I'll link that in the description box if you wanna make some of your own. And as for where I find all the images I use in my reading journal, I get them all from Pinterest. This year I decided to really focus on vintage illustrations of butterflies and moths and flowers and mushrooms as accents. And for the main images to look at old paintings that gave me a bit of a cozy bookish vibe. What I like about the scrapbooky style is I can kind of free flow with it and just keep adding different elements and layering things until I get the perfect cozy feel. I also really love to use washi tape in my reading journal for a little bit of an accent and of course my stamps. I don't wanna use up too many pages for my yearly spreads because I do tend to read quite a few books and I wanna have enough pages to write my little entries, my reviews about every single book I read in the year. This year, my goal is to read 125 books, so I definitely don't have any room for wasted pages. So I'm really trying to be thoughtful about what spreads I include and what spreads I don't. So while I am recreating some of my favorite spreads that I've used in my past couple reading journals, I have eliminated some of them like my series tracker, which is now incorporated in my Notion reading tracker, which I will be making a video about soon. Let me know in the comments down below if you're excited to see how I track my reading in Notion. It is quite comprehensive. <laughs> but I found that tracking the series I'm reading is a little more streamlined, incorporating it into Notion. So for this cover page, like I said, I really wanted to focus on a cozy, layered, textured, bookish kind of feel. I have some of these vintage botanical illustration stickers, so I thought I would use some of those with sort of wintry or fall foliage. I also love my new washi tape dispenser. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you won't have seen these, but I recently moved all my most used washi tapes into these dispensers that are stackable and they're so convenient and it's much easier to see what I have and keep everything organized. I am mildly obsessed. I also wanted to incorporate a quote here and Part of me is wondering if I've used this quote for something before because I know I've heard this quote before, but regardless, I really like it and I decided to use it again, which is a well-read woman is a dangerous creature because it's true. <laughs> we know that at many times in history, an educated woman has been seen as a threat, as something dangerous. And I, for one, totally embrace my identity as a dangerous creature due to my voracious consumption of books. <laughs> Honestly, it's kind of a flex. And just finishing off these spreads with a couple extra stamps here, a book and some foliage, and we're ready to move on to the more practical spreads in this setup because my reading journal is all about marrying form and function, which is something I like to try to do in many areas of my life. In that same vein, I wanna to talk to you about this video's sponsor, Brooklinen. Brooklinen is a luxury sheets company focused on creating high quality textiles for your home. If you're watching this video, I assume you are also a reader and I don't know about you, but hi Chewy. 
but my absolute favorite place to read in my entire house is in my bed. It's the coziest, it's the comfiest, and a huge reason for that is my Brooklyn and Sheets. The older I get, the more I appreciate high quality things in my life, especially the fabrics that are touching my skin. And we spend so many hours in bed, wrapped in our sheets every single night. And I can't believe it took me multiple decades to realize how much of an upgrade having nice sheets is. Brooklinen has something for everyone, whether you're a linen fan, a flannel fan, maybe you prefer cotton. Brooklinen is always releasing new seasonal colors and I just couldn't resist their new Canyon Clay color in the classic Percal, so. Their seasonal colors can sell out pretty quick. So if you see something you like, get on that fast. Starting with the core sheet set in cream. It's so crisp, so classic. And the part I'm most excited about, the new color, Canyon Clay. And I really love this color. It's a soft, slightly desaturated, almost faded looking terracotta. And I love that that gives it a bit more of a muted, sophisticated vibe, even though it's still a bright color. It's not super in your face. <laughs> I think the Canyon Clay along with the cream is gonna be such a classy, beautiful combination in this room. And honestly, now that I'm looking at it, these check sheets would actually look so nice with this Canyon Clay duvet cover because it almost looks like a darker tone of the sort of peach color in the check. I might have to combine them at some point in the future because honestly, just looking at it now, it's a vibe. Instead of buying individual items, you can save 20% when you go for a hardcore bundle as I did, which includes a flat sheet, a fitted sheet, a duvet cover, and two sets of pillowcases. And you can go for a full matching set or you can mix and match like I have, choosing from 20 plus colors and patterns to perfectly suit the vibe in your bedroom. Brooklinen's website is super easy to use so you can shop for your new luxurious sheets from the comfort of your own home even the comfort of your own bed. Brooklinen is offering my viewers a special discount of $20 off any order over $100. Just click the link below and use code plantbasedbride. Now I can't wait to get these on my bed, so I am going to throw these in the wash. Okay, let's go. I've been sleeping in Brooklyn and Sheets exclusively now for over a year and I'm never going back. They're so much nicer than other sheets I bought in the past, even expensive sheets from other brands. I'm just such a huge fan of Brooklinen and I've enjoyed every different type of sheets that I've tried from them. Brooklinen never misses. And honestly, I feel really good about recommending them to you because I love sleeping in them. And it's not just me, my husband constantly says how happy he is. What are you doing? That I have been working with Brooklinen and that all our sheets are Brooklinen now because he has also been obsessed with them and he's also feeling really spoiled. But he's constantly talking about how cozy and comfy our Brooklinen sheets are and I couldn't agree more. The Percal sheets are perfect for hot sleepers, which I am one. So if you're like me and you overheat in the middle of the night, these sheets are breathable and stay nice and cool with a 270 thread count. They really have that crisp, luxurious feel like the bedding at a really nice hotel. Brooklyn and Sheets have been tested for harmful chemicals and they are always Oikotex certified, making them safe for you and your family. Whoa. <laughs> oh. Hi, Julie. So the sheets are clean. They're on the bed. I love the feel of these. They definitely feel like crisp luxurious hotel sheets, if you know, you know. So I'm very excited to sleep in these tonight and I'll definitely let you know tomorrow how they are, how I like them as always, but I have a good feeling. I think I'm gonna have a good night's sleep. I just woke up and I'm a bit groggy, but <laughs> I wanted to say right away that these sheets were so comfy, very cool and cozy. They kept me both warm enough because we do keep our house at around 16 degrees Celsius at night in the winter here, but also cool enough because I do tend to overheat in the middle of the night, even at 16 degrees if I have too many blankets on. It did help that my husband is not in town right now because he is a furnace, but Yoda did sleep on top of me all night and she is a tiny little furnace too. But I stayed at the perfect temperature. I was cozy and comfy, felt very luxurious. So that's my first night verdict. I'm a big fan. I'm very happy. Don't forget that Brooklinen is offering my viewers a special discount of $20 off any order over $100. Just click the link below and use code plantbasedbride. Thank you again so much to Brooklinen for sponsoring this video. I'm very excited about my new sheets. 
Okay, so we're starting on the more practical spreads now, starting with the index. Archer and Olive notebooks aren't numbered, but I go through and add numbers as I add spreads so that I can input them in my index and I can always find what I need to find. I personally don't go to the granular level of writing out every single book and what page it's on, but you could definitely do that if you wanna be able to find a specific book really quickly. I tend to remember what month I read a book. I don't know why, but <laughs> I just heavily associate the books I read with the time of year and what else was going on in my life at that time and the other books I was reading around then. So I find I can pretty much find anything as long as I know how to quickly get to my October spreads or my May spreads whatever it may be. This is also great if I end up adding more of a longer term tracker somewhere in the middle of the reading journal, if I get the idea for a spread that I didn't think to add at the start of the year, I can always find it very easily with an index. Chewy decided to snuggle with me as I was working on this spread, so I thought I would turn the camera a little bit so you could see him in all of his floofy glory. He was having so much fun watching me sort through all my different images and stickers trying to pick what I wanted to use for this spread. It was quite adorable. But once I picked my main image and some little accents, I could stamp in the header, add this bookish stamp, and then of course add some washi tape to really finish things off. Moving on to my reading tracker, this is a really simple spread, but it's a very satisfying one. This is the spread where I create as many boxes as books I wanna read in a year, and every time I finish a book, I get to fill in a box. It is very satisfying for my brain, which is why I keep making it. Because my goal this year is to read 125 books, I'm making 125 little boxes, which did take a minute, I'm not gonna lie, but Chewy came for more snuggles, so it's all good. Once I had my boxes finished, I just had to add numbers 1 through 125. And then it was time to decorate. I wanted to add a header, 2024 reading tracker, and of course some washi tape, some stickers, some little accents, some stamps. Just make it look a little more thoughtfully maximalist, if you know what I mean. Layered and cozy. I feel like those are my go-to words for my reading journal. I will usually use my light beige Tombow 990 to fill in these boxes. That's also my go-to highlighter when I'm annotating as I read. I just love the soft beige color and it's light enough that you can still see the number through it. So it's really nice for using in a tracker of this sort. I would love to know what your reading goal is for this year. So let me know down in the comments below whether you're hoping to read one book or five or 15 or 200, whatever it is, I would love to know. And it's all valid and amazing. Every book read is a good thing in my opinion. Moving over to my next spread, I feel like this is the one that has become the most well-known on my channel, and that is my book bracket. My first video back this year was filling out my 2023 book bracket to find my favorite book of the year. So if you wanna see how this spread works and how I use it, check out that video. I feel like it's a fun one, and you can also get some awesome book recommendations. My 12 favorite reads of the year are featured in that video. This is definitely one of my most anticipated spreads every year. I set it up right at the start of the year and then I don't use it until the year is over and I've read every book I'm going to read in that year and it helps me figure out my favorite book of the entire year, which is very exciting for me. So I love setting this up and just the anticipation that slowly builds all year until I get to use it. Moving over to my next set of spreads, I actually set these up on a live stream with my patrons, which is really fun. My book bingo and some reading goals for 2024. My book bingo, I decided to use prompts from the Read Harder Challenge from Book Riot once again. So I'll link them down below if you wanna check out their Read Harder Challenge for 2024. I feel like they're really good at coming up with diverse and interesting reading challenges, reading prompts. So I like to make a little book bingo out of it and see if I can win the bingo by the end of the year, trying to fulfill these prompts. 
I won't tell you all the prompts. Like I said, I'll link their Read Harder Challenge post in the description box so you can go check them out if you want to do something similar or if you just want to try the Read Harder Challenge. But just for a little bit of a taste, a little bit of a teaser, their first couple prompts for Read Harder 2024 are read a cozy fantasy book, read a YA book by a trans author, read a middle grade horror novel, read a history book by a BIPOC author, and read a sci-fi novella. There are also prompts like reading a book in translation from a country you've never visited, which works very well with my reading around the world continuing challenge that I've been doing, reading a comic that has been banned. So they have a nice variety. And if you're trying to kind of push yourself outside of your comfort zone, if you find you always read the same kinds of books about the same kinds of people or written by the same kinds of people, the Read Harder Challenge might be a nice way for you to kind of get outside your comfort zone and read a bit more diversely, read about different things, read about different experiences, just give yourself a bit of direction to experiment. And you might find a new genre that you really love, or you might find a new favorite author or just learn something that you didn't know before, which is what I really love about reading diversely. And I think the Read Harder Challenge is a really great way to kind of dip your toe in, as it were. As for my reading goals for this year, I mentioned to my patrons in our live stream that I was struggling to keep up with my reading goals in 2023. I was definitely very much on a mood reading kick. And I must admit, I was not checking in super regularly with my goals or really trying all that hard to find books that fit them. So I tried to make my goals a little bit more achievable, maybe a touch broader, while still trying to make them a bit of a challenge. So I do have to strive to hit it, you know? So for each goal, I have six little boxes. So my goal is to read six books in each of these categories, which are reading a book with disability, mental illness, and or neurodiversity rep, door stoppers, meaning really big books. I classify these as books over 500 pages, though different people have different criteria for what they count as a door stopper. Non-Western classics, Canadian authors, books with BIPOC main characters, books with LGBTQIA plus main characters, translated books, and books in French. over to my next spread here, which is going to be my 24 books in 2024. I like to pick out a series of books that I would really like to read in the year as a bit of a year-long TBR, just something to aim for. And once again, I feel like in 2023, I didn't do the best job. I did read a number of the books in my 23 and 2023 spread, but Again, I was in a really mood reedy place and I definitely felt like it was out of sight, out of mind for a lot of the books. I didn't have a physical copy of a lot of them. They weren't on my shelf. I didn't necessarily already have them from my library or in audiobook form or something. So I just kept forgetting to read them. So this year I thought something that might help and kind of two goals in one would be to exclusively pick my 24 books for 2024 out of books that I have physical copies of. So these are all books that are on my TBR bookshelf. I have each one of these 24 books sitting, waiting to be read. And because I have a physical copy, I can very easily put them in a pile or in one dedicated shelf together and they can stare me down every day, which will be a good motivator <laughs> for me to read them. Plus, as an added benefit, the more of these I read, the more I get through my physical TBR, which would be great because it's gotten a little bit out of hand, I'm not gonna lie. So these books cover quite a few different genres. We have historical fiction, science fiction, horror, literary fiction, memoir, non-Western classics, fantasy, Western classics, contemporary fiction, quite a few translated works here, and a couple French books. So I really tried to pick a wide range of books to put on this spread, which would also help me to achieve some of my other goals. But I'm really excited to read these. And a couple of these are sequels to books that I really loved, and I've just been taking forever to read the sequel. Angel's Game, Parable of the Talents, Ocean's Echo, and A Day of Falling Night are all sequels to books that I loved. So I've been thinking that I might make a reading vlog 
where I read sequels to books I loved to see if I loved the second book as much as the first. Let me know in the comments if you'd want to see that video, because maybe I can make that sooner rather than later and knock off four books from my 24 books in 2024. Also, many of these books are written by authors from all over the world, which helps with my reading around the world goal, which conveniently is my next spread. So for my reading around the world spread, I'm using my same world map that I've been using for the last couple years. I actually shared the file that I use of this, which is a map that I found online. And then I altered the color of the background because I didn't like the original color. <laughs> so I made it a nice neutral beige. I shared this with my patrons so that they could also use it in their reading journals if they wanted to. So that is available there if you join the Patreon. You can print out this exact map and use it in your own reading journal. But I also love to use my map washi tape on my reading around the world spread. It just really adds to that old world traveling aesthetic. And I love adding the little dashed traveling around the world line. I think it's so cute. I haven't filled in my reading around the world spread for 2023 just yet. I should really do that soon. So I actually don't know how many countries I have left, but I feel like I've been making really good progress. Maybe this is putting too much pressure on myself. I don't know if I should put this out there, but I'm kind of hoping that I can finish the challenge this year, that I will have read a book from every single country by the end of 2024. Maybe I won't be able to do it. I don't know. <laughs> I know there are still some countries to go that are definitely harder to find books that have been translated into English. So maybe that is too big of a goal, but I would really, really love to do it. So if you also want to do a reading around the world challenge, check out my blog post. I'll link it down below where I've compiled all the books that I've found in my research from different countries around the world, but also all of your suggestions, because since I started this challenge, y'all have been dropping amazing suggestions for so many different countries in the comments. And I've really done my best to compile all of those into one place over on my website. So go check that out if you want a list to start with. And that brings us to the end of this reading journal setup. I'll flip through all the spreads one more time so you can see them. I'm so excited for yet another reading year. I've already finished 11 books this year. Some really good, some really not good. We've really run the gambit already, but I'm having a great time. I love how energized I feel at the start of a new year and how excited I am about all the amazing stories I'm gonna get to experience over the next 12 months. And I hope you're excited too. Let me know in the comments if you have any interesting reading goals this year, if you're trying to expand your reading in a particular way, I wanna hear about it. If you have already read an amazing book that you gave five stars, let me know what that is in the comments down below. Leave a bookish emoji in the comments so I know you made it all the way to the end and that you're a real one. Like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you feel like it. Thank you as always to my patrons for your support. I appreciate you all so, so much. Brooklinen is offering my viewers a special discount of $20 off any order over $100. Just click the link below and use code plantbasedbride. Thank you again to Brooklinen for sponsoring this video. And with that, I'm gonna get going. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you really, really soon in my next one. Bye friends.